Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be his kingdom now, now and forever. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, give us grace to cast away the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Now in the time of this mortal life in which your son, Jesus Christ, came to visit us in great humility, that in the last day when he shall come again in his glorious majesty, to touch both the living and the dead, we may rise to the life immortal through him who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first reading this morning is from Isaiah. Oh, that you would tear open the heavens and come down so that the mountains would quake at your presence as would when fire kindles brushwood and fire causes water to boil to make your name known to our adversaries so that the nations might tremble at your presence. When you did awesome deeds that we did not expect, you came down and the mountains quaked at your presence. From ages past, no one has heard, no ear has perceived, no eye has seen any God besides you, who works for those who wait for him. You meet those who gladly do right, those who remember you in your ways. But you were angry and we sinned because you hid yourself, we transgressed. We all have become like one who is unclean and all our righteous deeds are like filthy cloth. We all fade like a leaf and our inequities like the wind take us away. There is no one who calls your name or attempts to take hold of you for you have hidden your face from us and you have delivered us into the hands of our iniquity. Yet, O oh Lord, you are our father. We are the clay and you are our potter. We are all the work of your hand. Do not be exceedingly angry, O oh Lord, and do not remember inequity forever. Now consider, we are all your people. The word of the Lord. The psalm this morning is Psalm 80. We will say it responsively at the half verse. Hear, O shepherd of Israel, leading Joseph like a flock. Shine forth you that are enthroned upon the cherubim. In the presence of Ephraim, Benjamin, and Manasseh. Stir up the strength and come to help us. Restore us, O God of hosts. Show the light of your countenance, and we shall be saved. You have fed them with the bread of tears. You have given them all the tears to drink. You have made us the derision of our neighbors. And our enemies laugh us to scorn. Restore us, O God of hosts. Show the light of your countenance, and we shall be saved. Let your hand be upon the man of your right hand. And the son of man you have made so strong for yourselves. And so we will never turn away from you. Give us life that we may call upon your name. Restore us, O Lord God of hosts. Show the light of your countenance and we shall be saved. The second reading this morning is from 1 Corinthians. Grace to you. Peace from God, our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ. For give thanks, excuse me, I give thanks to my God always for you because of the grace of God that has been given you in Christ Jesus. For in every way you have been enriched in him, in speech and knowledge of every kind, just as the testimony of Christ has been strengthened among you so that you are not lacking in any spiritual gift as you wait for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ. 
He will also strengthen you to the end so that you may be blameless on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful. By him, you were called into the fellowship of his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel. Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. But in those days, after the suffering, the sun will be darkened, and the moon will not give its light, and the stars will be falling from heaven, and the powers in the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in clouds with great power and glory. Then he will send out the angels and gather his elect, from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the ends of heaven. From the fig tree, learn its lesson. As soon as its branch becomes tender and puts forth its leaves, you know that summer is near. So also when you see these things taking place, you know that he is near at the very gates. Truly I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But about that day or hour, no one knows, neither the angels in heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. Beware, keep alert, for you do not know when the time will come. It is like a man going on a journey when he leaves home and puts his slaves in charge, each with his work and commands the doorkeeper to be on the watch. Therefore, keep awake, for you do not know when the master of the house will come, in the evening, or at midnight, or at cockcrow, or at dawn, or else he may find you asleep when he comes suddenly. And what I say to you, I say to all, keep awake. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable unto you, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. When my father was dying, my mother and I were with him, and my mother took my father's hand and she said, you can't die. I don't know how to do all the things I need to do. 
And then she began to list all the things she didn't know how to do, one of which was she didn't know how to put gas in her car at the self-service pump. After my father died, we grieved for him. To use an Old Testament word, we lamented for him. Now, of course, the lament was even longer and more profound for my mother because everything about her daily life had suddenly changed. She'd been married to my father since she was 17 years old, all of her adult life. She no longer had his companionship, his presence, or his help. She'd have to learn to do new things, such as how to pump the gas in the car. And she'd have to learn how to do tasks in new ways. Cooking for one is different than cooking for two or three. And although we knew that my father was in a better place, we cried out to God for the pain of losing him. The passage in Isaiah and the psalm are laments. The passage in Isaiah was written when the Israelites returned from having been in exile from their homeland. And they'd had high hopes for their return that weren't immediately realized. Things weren't as they'd been in the past. They faced the difficult journey of rebuilding and knew that what they built would be different from what they'd left. Their lives had changed. And they felt that God wasn't doing God's part to restore things to the way they'd been fasting. Getting back to normal was taking too long. Some things were lost forever. And even though some of it might have been their own fault, they lamented what had been lost. You know, we're also facing a difficult journey. Our lives have changed because of the pandemic. And God is making this thing go away fast enough. It's as if we've experienced the death of someone close to us, and perhaps we have, or that we've experienced an exile, or maybe a combination of both. We sense that getting back to normal will take a long time, and that some parts of our lives might be lost forever. We'll have to learn to do new things, and we'll have to learn to do all things differently. Just like my mom had to learn to put gas in her car and cook for one instead of two. Just like the Israelites had to learn to find God in new ways. We wait for God to help us and we lament. Ah, but here's the good news in times of personal and corporate loss. It's found in what Paul writes to the Corinthians. You are not lacking in any spiritual gift as you wait for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ. He will also strengthen you to the end so that you may be blameless on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful. By him you were called into the fellowship of his son, Jesus Christ our Lord. So God has provided us as we wait for God to help us. God has provided for us the gift of strength. God is faithful. God is here. If we look closely, we see God in how many of us have given up personal desires for the collective good. Closing our church again to in-person worship is an example of that. We closed because we wanted to keep the infection rate down. We try to keep businesses open as long as possible into the holidays. We want our neighbors who own small businesses to be able to salvage the year. We also want to keep the infection rate down so that we don't flood the hospitals with too many cases, meaning there's not enough care to go around. God is in our decision to sacrifice for our neighbors. We also can see God's spirit working in us to create something new. Church will be different even after everyone has the vaccine and we can sing again. We will have built virtual relationships that will continue. We will re-envision ways of being the church, including more collaboration with sister churches and a close look at what church really means. In fact, we've already begun that work as we realize that church isn't so much about the building as it is about our church family. 
and her impact on the community. God creates anew. This creation is a continual process. Once in a while, these life-changing experiences move that creation forward quickly. We will rebuild anew after this pandemic. And what we build will be spirit-filled, life-given, and relevant to the world around us. We'll rebuild just as the Israelites eventually rebuilt their world. Just as my mom and all other widows eventually, with God's help, find a way to create a new life for themselves. So back to me and my mom. After we had our cries and a few days had passed, after our lamenting was over, I took her to the gas station and showed her how to pump gas. It signaled the beginning of her new life as an adult, independent of anyone else. And although she always missed my father, she had a new freedom. She could and did make changes in the home. She hired a contractor to create a sunroom out of a porch. And she put mauve draperies and carpet in the living room and dining room. And that's something my dad probably would not have gone for. But it was something that she really enjoyed. And she also spent more time in outreach ministries that bless the community. Waiting for God to complete God's transformation in our lives and in the world is frustrating. And during that waiting time, it's all right to lament what we've lost. But in the fullness of time, we move forward and with God's help, give birth to something new. Amen. Please join with me in affirming our faith through the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sin. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. But Janet, unmute yourself. There we go, sorry. With all our heart and all, with all our mind, let us pray to the Lord saying, Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above, for the loving kindness of God, and for the salvation of our souls, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the world, for the welfare of the Holy Church, of God, especially the Episcopal Church in Dublin, Georgia, and for the unity of all peoples, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our presiding Bishop Michael, our Bishop Sean, our priest Randy, our deacon Martha, St. Andrew's Deanery Prayer Partner Church of the Advent, and St. John's Deanery Prayer Partner St. Peter's, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our president, for the leaders of the nation, and for all in authority, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. 
for the towns of Newfane and Wilson, for our every city and community, and for those who live in them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For seasonable weather and for an abundance of the fruits of the earth, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the good earth which God has given us and for the wisdom and will to conserve it, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who travel on land, on water, or in the air, or through outer space, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the aged and infirmed, for the widowed and orphans, and for the sick and the suffering, especially Joe Bresca Sr., Connie Eckbeck, Dorothy Haas, Laura Hubbard, Emily and Michael Lanigan, Debbie Noon, Ed Reeb, J.R. Reed, Mary Winterstein, Armand, Dean, Jamie, Nick, Pam, Anne, Carolyn, Sandy, Kathy Dempsey Sims and family, Peter, Barb, Bob, Father Sam, Karen, Millie, Ron, Lori, Jaylianne, Connie, Margaret, Peter, Zeta, Madeline, Linda, Priscilla E., Nancy, Heather, Bob, Ravella, Clara, Jackson, Gracie Lynn, Hugh, Megan, Laura, Anastasia, Anastasia, and any other that you now name. Dusty family, the Variety family. And the people on our long-term prayer list, which we will read at the table, is set. Let us pray to the Lord. Oh, For those who are serving in the military especially, Garrett Adelizio, Vincent Adelizio, Matthew Chesty, James Clark, Joseph Depew, Hannah Federico, Ryan Haas, Ethan Knott, Ryan Lanigan, Peg Magret, Jeremy Martin, Rudy Sanchez, Bryce Smith, and Mark Vogt. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the poor and the oppressed, for the unemployed and the destitute, for prisoners and captives, and for all who remember and care for them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all who have died in the hope of the resurrection, for all the departed, especially Jim Allen, Walter By, Judy Donaldson, Bruce Howlett, James Knott, Roy Lambertson, Mildred Leyland, David Waters, and any other you now name. Richard and Chet. Bob Bear. Let us pray to the Lord. 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 For the deliverance from all danger, violence, oppression, and degradation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. That we may end our lives in faith and hope, without suffering and without reproach, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Defend us, deliver us, and in thy compassion protect us, O Lord, by thy grace. Lord, have mercy. In the community, communion of St. Andrews, St. John, and of all the saints, let us commend ourselves and one another and all our life to Christ our God. To thee, o Lord, our God. May we now, may we who are very inconvenienced, remember those whose lives are at stake. May we who have no risk factors, remember those most vulnerable. May we, who have the luxury of working from home, remember those who must choose between preserving their health and making their rent. May we, who have the flexibility to care for our children when their schools close, remember those who have no options. May we, who have to cancel our trips, remember those who have no safe place to go. May we, who are losing our margin money in the tumult of the economic market, 
remember those who have no margin at all. May we who settle in for a quarantine at home remember those who have no home. As fear grips our country, let us choose to love. And during this time, when we may not be able to physically wrap our arms around each other, let us yet find ways to be the loving embrace of God to our neighbors. Amen. Grant, O oh God, that your holy and life-giving spirit may so move every human heart and especially the hearts of the people of this land, that barriers which divide us may crumble, suspicions disappear, and hatred cease, that our divisions may, being healed, we may live in justice and peace through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O Lord, our God, accept the fervent prayers of your people. In the multitude of your mercies, look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help, for you are gracious, O lover of souls. To you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, by what we have done, and by what we have done now. We have not loved with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Peace, everyone. Peace. Peace. Oh, we have a few more who joined us since we started. Peace. Peace. How are <laughs> folks this morning? If you joined us late, um, I mentioned that because we, um, one of the singers had an exposure to COVID, we decided not to have singing this morning. No one has COVID. No one's tested positive for it. But it hasn't been the 14 days from the exposure time yet, so we just wanted to be really, really safe. So um, hopefully they'll be back next week. Um, announcements, who has announcements? Randy, I have a tie up some. I figured you did. Yeah. Hi, everyone. Um, just a few announcements. Don't forget Pampered Chef fundraiser. It goes through December, I think it was 12th. I dropped the link. Um, in the chat, but if you guys came later, you won't see it. So I'll put it back in here again. And then also um, at our staff meeting, we talked about having the intergenerational group um, do an activity for the community. It's called the Community Christmas Craft. Um, I threw in the chat the flyer. Basically, families from Newfane. Um, Wilson, you know, all families from around our community can come into either the church on Wednesdays and Thursdays between two and five or the community store Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday during our regular hours and pick up crafts that they can do with the kids. They make Christmas ornaments. So like I'm, I'm crafting away here. Here's a little puzzle wreath that we're making. And I just was, I'll admit it, I was maybe doing some of this while we were doing prayers today. Um, and there's like four more. So uh, they're all gonna be bagged up in little packets with all the craft supplies and put into one larger bag. Hopefully families will find it a fun way to celebrate, you know, the Christmas season and Christmas spirit. And then the last thing um, we also talked about, Randy, were you gonna announce Christmas, the Christmas party or whatever? Oh, you can announce it. You're, you're on a roll. Go for it. Okay. Yeah. Well, it's like I have the mic again, right, you guys? Um, <laughs> sorry. December 11th at 7 o'clock, we're going to do a Zoom um, Christmas celebration happy hour. 
uh, we figured that we would just kind of hang out and chit chat with each other from 7 to 7.30, 7.45-ish. And then after, I'll facilitate some online games. We can do charades or Pictionary or trivia. Um, so you can just kind of relax and, again, celebrate the season. So that's, that's it for me. <laughs> and all, everyone who's at our worship is invited to all these events, okay? So, um, you know, don't think, oh, well, I'm from, you know, I usually attend Christ Church, or I usually attend, you know, St. John's, or I usually don't attend anywhere, or whatever. Everybody who's here is invited to these events. I have a couple others to mention on, um, I believe it's the, it, whatever the second Sunday of the month is, is that the 12th or 13th, whatever. We're going to have a crazy <clears throat> Christmas pajama sweatshirt day. And so that means you come to Zoom church wearing your crazy Christmas pajamas or your crazy sweatshirt, okay? So plan for that, that'll be kind of fun. And then the next week, we are going to have a Zoom Christmas pageant complete with children as Mary and Joseph and complete with all the, the you know Christmas carols that we usually have with the Christmas pageant. So everybody look forward to that. You know, just because we're on Zoom, there's no reason we can't have fun with some of these things. Um, any other announcements anybody has? Are there birthdays or anniversaries? Anybody have a birthday or anniversary? Let me scan through here, see if I see any hands. No, huh? All right. Well, walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself in offering and sacrifice to God. Lift up your hearts. Lift them. lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right. It is right. it is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, because you sent your beloved Son to redeem us from sin and death and to make us heirs in him of eternal life. Then when he shall come again in power and great triumph to judge the world, we may without shame or fear rejoice to behold his appearing. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. <laughs> God for the goodness and love that you've made known to us in creation, the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all in the word made flesh, Jesus your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate <clears throat> from the Virgin Mary, be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil 
and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. When he thanks to you, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. When he'd given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory, and we offer to you the sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection unto your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country, where with Andrew, John, and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him, and with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. It's not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. <laughs> God for you and feed on him in your heart faith with thanksgiving. Now, if you do not have bread and wine, we will say together the prayer of spiritual communion, which is printed in your bulletin. My Jesus, I believe that you are truly present in the blessed sacrament of the altar. I love you above all things and long for you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. So you've already come, I embrace you and unite myself entirely to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen.
The blessing of God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit be with you this day and every day. Amen. be called God is a refuge for the oppressed, a refuge in times of trouble. Go, embraced by the source of life, love, and hope, following in the way of Jesus, just and compassionate, encouraged by the spirit of grace and wisdom. Thanks be to God.